Did any one of you use uh, Xenon before for uh, anesthesia? Anybody from Russia? I assume <laughs> no. So no response. So actually, I'm, uh, um, I'm dealing with this new drug uh, since uh, 1999. But I was not the first, uh, Cullen was the first to use it in men and could show that indeed you could perform anesthesia with xenon. And what we know about uh, the uh, mechanism, it uh, inhibits uh, the NMDA receptor. Uh, we know from in a lot of in vitro and vivo models, which we also performed, that it reduces injury in a variety of organs. Uh, it uh, seems to have an ideal chiming dosing the duration so far remains open. How long should I use it in order to uh, achieve organ protection? The nearly mentioned ideal uh, properties of xenon <coughs> are mainly because it is not uh, metabolized and because it has a really low blood gas uh, coefficient, which uh, should result in a really fast emerge uh, from um, uh, anesthesia. So the first uh, RCT we performed uh, was published 2003. Uh, we included in this study 218 patients, and actually it was a study to demonstrate the safety and the efficacy uh, of this uh, drug in ASA1 and ASA2 patients. And what we could clearly show that indeed in comparison to the uh, comparative uh, drugs, the isoflurane, the xenon, uh, uh, achieve to uh, get to a higher blood pressure, mean arterial blood pressure than the isoflurane, and at the same time, uh, we had a faster emerge from the uh, anesthesia. So clearly we could demonstrate it was associated with hemodynamic stability, it was effective and safe, we didn't see observe, uh, adverse events with respect to, to xenon in comparison to the other drug, and it allowed a really fast uh, recovery. One point was when we published that uh, letter to the editor, um, why did they use uh, a volatile drug as a comparative drug? So we were forced to perform another study to compare this to propofol, and actually the, this study was uh, performed in 160 patients, also is a one and six, and again we uh, learned that the systolic blood pressure was more maintained uh, with xenon in comparison to propofol. The heart rate uh, was lower, uh, which is uh, really a, a positive effect uh, when we are using xenon anesthesia. Uh, then the question was what could be the right population to use it? We know that xenon um, has a reduced availability and so we believed at that time point, uh, due to our sim uh, 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 several in vivo, uh, in vitro and animal studies, that uh, it was not reducing the contractility uh, in these models. We used it also in patients uh, undergoing elective surgery, but healthy patients, and we analyzed the left ventricular function in this group of patients. Again, we included uh, more than 250 patients, and we analyzed the myocardial function using TEE, and clearly we could demonstrate that again, uh, xenon did not influence uh, this parameter, uh, so actually, uh, in this healthy group of patients, it seemed that uh, we had a reduced myocardial uh, contractility only in isoflurane, but not in uh, xenon. Um, again, we demonstrated uh, that the emergence uh, and early cognitive function in the elderly patients, in comparison to the other really fast uh, uh, drug uh, desfluane uh, was uh, comparative, uh, so again we found that uh, the emergence was faster uh, when we used uh, xenon in comparison to desfluane, but then we also compared what about uh, the cognitive function, we used alertness, divided attention, and so on. Uh, there we couldn't demonstrate any difference uh, in the 6 to 12 hour uh, postoperative period or in the uh, 66 to 72 hour postoperative period. But what we noticed from these studies is that indeed we found uh, more uh, often uh, the nausea and emetic episodes, so we specifically analyzed this in another study and we could clearly demonstrate that the PONF rate was much higher 
uh, in the xenon group uh, as in the propofol group. So this was without mm. any prophylactic drug uh, for uh, PONF. So it was 66%, so this was really a high percentage. So if you are using it, you have to use uh, anti-emetic drugs. So then the question was, uh, are there uh, some other meta-analysts uh, out there anal analyzing all the different uh, studies? Most of the studies came, or a lot of our, the studies came from our uh, department. So first we analyzed, uh, the, or this study, this uh, meta-analysis, oops, uh, meta-analysis analyzed uh, the change of amino arterial pressure, and this was actually not changed and during xenon anesthesia, but always changed uh, if volatile anesthetic were used, and this was also always changed if propofol uh, was a comparative uh, drug. So that was uh, clear, and that was to expect it. And then um, again, it was analyzed uh, how fast is the emergence from anesthesia with xenon or with sevofluorin, isofluorin, or desfluorin. And uh, all the studies demonstrated that you had have a faster emerge from uh, anesthesia with uh, xenon. This is due to the uh, low uh, blood gas uh, coefficient. But uh, using the uh, problem and analyzing the problem, the postoperative nausea and vomiting, all the studies showed that indeed the incidence uh, with uh, xenon uh, was much higher, and so the control uh, always was uh, favorable, uh, favorable with respect to a lower incidence of postoperative nausea and vomiting. This was true for volatile as well for propofol uh, as a comparative drug. So if we would like to introduce a new uh, anesthetic, then we need a good pharmaco uh, pharmacodynamic profile. Yes, it has uh, a good pharmacodynamic profile. It is efficient. The simple application is not true. Actually, you need a specific device, but then it's, it's easy to use. You can use it as any uh, volatile drug. Then it should actually be less expensive if you are using a new drug, or you should have some other benefits. For sure, it's not less expensive. The costs around, um, I would guess, 300 to 400 euros for two hours of anesthesia. So uh, in comparison, if you use uh, volatile or propofol, it's 10 euros, around 10 euros. Yeah, so it's, it's costly. And um, yes, the question is with the good side uh, effect profile, I would guess uh, nausea and vomiting is not uh, such a good thing. So if you are using, and if you would like to use it because of the good hemodynamic profiles, because the, that this drug is organic, uh, organic protective, then you, use, uh, you have to have a good uh, indication. So in my opinion, uh, it's still in search for an indication. And so we analyzed, especially in one group uh, of patients, the incidence of delirium. Unfortunately, I'm not able to tell you what are the results. Um, there were some benefit results in this study, but the study is still not published. We have to wait uh, for that before I'm allowed to give you some data on that. Another topic could be to use it in cardiac surgery, and my colleague, uh, Stefan Rex, uh, he uh, um, tried to use that in a study. We performed the feasibility and safety study in our own department, and uh, indeed we could show it more safe to use this, and this is very important because you have the same problem as uh, nitrous oxide. If you have an air bubble, it will increase by dimension uh, due to the uh, xenon gas, because xenon is diffusing into the air bubble. So that could have been a problem, but it is not, uh, in reality, it is not a problem. You can use it in cabbage. We did that in uh, about 20 patients. And my colleague, Stefan Rex, and he started a study to use that uh, in uh, off-pump uh, uh, cabbage procedures. And uh, indeed, uh, he could demonstrate that he used less uh, uh, no uh, in during the surgical procedure in the xenon group, and uh, in addition to that, he found a significant reduction in postoperative delirium in this group of patients. 
There's another study out, uh, um, genome for cabbage surgery. It's completed. It's also written, but again, I'm not allowed uh, to give you some data on this. So to come to an end um, of my uh, lecture, I was a little bit limited with the time, so I was fast. Um, I think um, the question is, where is the indication? And one indication might be the noise protection. And uh, there has been a study already published, 2016, uh, from Laizio, and he analyzed uh, the effect of uh, inhaled xenon in addition to all the other measures uh, we usually perform in uh, comatose uh, survivors of out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, and he could demonstrate that there was less white matter damage. Also, this was not uh, related or not trans translated into better uh, neurological outcomes in this uh, group of patients, but he only analyzed a small group of uh, patients. So to finalize and to come to a conclusion, I believe many RCTs and all the RCTs show a beneficial hemodynamic and recovery profile for xenon anesthesia. We have one study now which shows less delirium after cabbage. This could be good and could be a reason to use the high expensive drug xenon. But we have the problem of limited availability and the high cost. This uh, clearly restricts the number of large RCTs and uh, to perform these RCTs. So I'm absolutely convinced xenon is already licensed as an anesthetic drug. It's licensed as a drug as all. But uh, in my opinion, this drug is still in search for its indication. Thank you very much.